Oana, totul e în regulă? Aud, văd, sunt aproape fericită. E foarte bine. Deci, Oana ne va vorbi, cum spuneam mai devreme, despre counterparties in pain, Frida Kahlo's icon of contemporary myths. Sună foarte interesant, te ascultăm cu plăcere și interes. First of all, allow me to thank you for your patience <laughs> and to express my almost happiness <laughs> to see you all here and to connect one more time with you. Um, as uh, talking about the purpose and the method of this paper, I intend to provide a snapshot of a construct I dared to call Frida Sphere, as in atmosphere. <laughs> um, the exploratory method I, I have used involved following different approaches to identify and locate the presence of Frida's icon of Frida's myth. As uh, for terminology, counterbodies, it was a term used last year, 4th of July, to be more precise, as the name for an exhibition in Chrysalid Gallery opened by Neon Foundation at Rotterdam. Uh, as the organizers themselves declared, this kind of pop-up exhibition was to bring back the attention of the controversial narrative in order to offer a different and daring attitude of a many iteration of the body, both as thematic and visual input for research and interpretation. For me, counterbody is a term strong, strongly related to counter-identification that quite inspired the perspective of this investigation. Now, if anyone cares to know more about that, I can, I can develop further on during the, the questions what is a counter-transferential attitude and which is what English-speaking world um, uh, thinks about uh, counter-bodies. But let me resume to say that from my point of view, Frida's contemporary myth unifies the two parada paradigms, paradigms as generates a counter-transferential approach with the ones she establishes a contact with, as well as she convinces her public to accept what we usually refuse to accept, the extreme body suffering. So intense is the power with which Frida Kahlo strikes today, more or less 70 years after her death, that gives the impression that her message increases as time passing by, to the extent that I don't consider an exaggeration, including it in the terminology of this paper, a word as Friedosphere. Analyzing her presence into the contemporary world, <clears throat> her rescuing by Salma Hayek, who struggled for six long years to bring Frida to life in a movie in which icons like Madonna and Jennifer Lopez wanted to do the main role. As Salma Hayek put it in 2003, these two hours of a movie in which you have to tell 30 years of extraordinary life turns Frida in a sort of immediate, immediate pop icon overnight. Frida's history began, became a legend and then converted her into an icon. And then many years afterwards, Frida her, herself converts in both a myth and a generator of worldwide merchandise highly growing after the corona's pandemic. 
period. This is precisely why the bewildering title I have proposed suggests that contemporary myths are made, are made of icons. I'll skip the myth today theory of Roland Barthes, mainly because it was already spoken here yesterday. So, uh, because, it, because it is likely that Eliade's definition of myth doesn't quite, quite satisfy our need for speed, I just say, starting from Eliade, myths narrate a sacred history. They, are, they relate events that took place in a primordial time, that f the fable time of the beginnings. And as Eliade goes on, myth is always an account of creation. Well, time, time has changed. <laughs> we are out of time, we don't have enough time. We are in a hurry and so are our myths. Although we live more, we have less time. So our primordiality suffers a re recalculating process. Seven years ago, after one year of dramatic worldwide lockdown, can perfectly be a primordial time for us. From our perspective, as we are survivors of an apocalyptic year. After the Corona's time, we look back, we look back at Frida's life as a contemporary goddess, or who knows, maybe a contemporary saint, <laughs> that leads us through times of confinement. But who is Frida? Well, Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo Calderon was born in July of 1907 and died a few days after her 47th birthday. She had a clinical body in pain from early ages but completely broken after a bus accident. 17th of September, 1925, she forgot her umbrella. So she goes back to the art school and gets another bus, a bus she never got it before. The bus collided with a car, overtaking it. Some people died instantly. Others passed away later on in the hospital. She was particularly unfortunate because she had intended to, to, to be safe. But shockingly, Frida was impaled by a length of iron, which make it more extra extraordinary that she even survived at all. She was a virgin and the iron took away her virginity and her motherhood. She was carrying a bag with golden powder that after the crush was snowing over every body in the car, covering injured, dead bodies and survivors in gold. Initially, the doctors have only the ambition of keeping her alive. She was so young. But the handrail, which went straight through, throughout her body, was removed in an abrupt Unforgiving, unforgiving manner, which gave her consider, considerably, considerably pain. She had broken her coir bone as well as her back. Her right leg was also fractured many times, and her abdomen and uterus had also been punctured. Over her life, she submitted herself to 30 operations. She had to rest her body several months in bed, wearing a body brace, where she started to draw. The accident 
is present actually in many of her paintings, in his in her diary, in her correspondence, and of course in he, her pictures. The second accident Frida had was marrying Diego, the most famous Mexican painter of the time. Um, and she was considering this an accident after the, discovering that Diego has been very un, unfaithful to her, we included with one of her sister, Christina. So Frida herself wrote right in her diary that Diego was her second accident. But this, but Frida is much more, much more than this. She is a legion of contradictions. Um, she is an endless myth, as many articles put it. Frida Beyond the Myth, for instance, is the title of a biography, the most recent biography of her. So, so many Frida there are. The, the artist herself plays with the legion of Fridas. And one of her most famous pictures is called The Two Fridas. So the plur plural is an invention of her own. She already settles the plural. Frida dressed as a man. Frida dressed as a woman, Frida dressed as a Mexican traditional woman, Frida dressed in European clothes, Frida androgyne, Frida extremely feminine, Frida with a perfect body, Frida with a destroyed body, a beautiful, strong and powerful woman, a, fragi a fragile Mother never to be. Frida that everyone desires, men and women. Frida as a victim of Diego. Frida in love with Diego. Uh, with Diego. Frida hating Diego. Frida in pain. Frida in joy. Frida broken body, Frida return from the dead. Frida is a left wing politician. Frida in Casa Azul in her blue house. Frida fearless and Frida in fear. Sadness and joy. Frida has become a subject to global scrutiny of commercial exploitation, appropriated by artists, actors, singers, but also historians, activists, included Mexican government and embassies, museums, educational programs. Frida is by far the most present myth in our day life. Of course, women white more than men white. We have a Frida Barbie since 2018. Frida was a self-made woman, a painter, a Mexican painter, histrionic, solitary, loneliness, and surrounded by, by people. This whole avalanche went in crescendo in the past year. So the process of Trivia, trivia, <laughs> trivialization of Frida, transforming her from what it could be uh, the most important female painter of the 10th, 20th century in, into a talisman from the mythological point of view works wonders. The doctor to be Frida transformed by a tragic accident into an involuntary painter and an involuntary artist married to the most famous Mexican painter 
almost a, he a hero for the left-wing world, friend to Che Guevara and moral murderer of Trotsky, who was hospited into his own house. Frida goes from the love of her life, this man, and a multitude of females that loved her. Among them, Chavela Vargas, the, the famous singer. So there are many, many Fridas that try to cannibalize the painter or the author of the diary and try to weaken her, her artistical presence. But as a myth, the study of Frida reveals nowadays a complete um, cannibalization of the contemporary culture too. She became impossible to reach because succeeded, she succeeded where no other human being or woman would have made it. But as in, I will, I will skip some, uh, some theory or on myths again. Her broken body can't be dissociated from from Frida's myth, from Frida's work, from Frida's presence. And now the mythology of broken body, we all know. I will quickly mention some of them. Um, a broken body, if we have a close look to the ancient mythologies, also means missing limbs or missing parts of the body or including extra parts of the body from this point of view an angel which uh, who is a winged body or a griffin or the sphinx or the daemons are a composition or zoanthropomorphological creatures there are unusual numbers of body parts that are missing or that are extra like the cycle like the cycle cyclops the imperfection of limping god hephaestus the irish hero nuado who loses an arm in a battle and he is given a silver one to replace it, or the body of Osiris, torn into 14 pieces by the wife of Seth. Thank you. Or Tantalus that just kills his son, Pelops, and serves him in a diner, at a diner to the other gods. Remember that Demetri, she was the only one unaware, so she takes a bit of meat. And when the gods restore his body, Pelops' body, he missed one shoulder because of the goddess. So the list is quite large. But for nowadays, imagology, we all know that the the right leg of Frida was uh, shorter and she tried to hide it away and then she almost lost it and then she completely lost it one year before her death. Frida is, represents the empty motherhood and this is another missing, missing part of her body. We can find mytho mythologies of distinct body parts, but we can't easily find a goddess who can't, who, 
who is unable to deliver to deliver babies. Um, and then I would have liked to to mention some of them, but on another occasion. Then there are many there are many paintings that just um, just illustrates what what I have just said. Uh, she considered herself an Earth Mother, but an Earth Mother with no kids. So the blood itself flew from her body to feed the Earth and to give life to something, anything. She was obsessed with life and probably the, her strength comes from here. She no, she was nourishing the Mexican land. She, she still creates the to to nowadays that this need to go there, know her better, and identify her with her land, whatever her land would might be. La Casa Azul is her temple, her bed, her bedroom, her sanctuary. Her corsets are her icons. So that the whole universe of freedomania or frido idolatria or freedosphere are to be examined and to be to be notified as the whole merchandising and the tattoos and the the presence of Frida is all over. It's like she she is a compulsory icon of of our contemporary world. Thank you indeed. Thank you very much for your um, very interesting and also visual presentation.